Aloha mai kako, a Kamalvada Curtain Call, a weekly program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul Janes Brown. Our two intimate theaters, Maui Academy of Performing Arts Living Room and Pro Arts Playhouse, are presenting a marvelous virtual double feature for Maui thespian lovers. Go see Kimberly Akimbo on Thursday and then Birthday Candles on Friday and have a wonderful conversation about these two outstanding examples of contemporary theater by a convocation of our best actors and some exciting newcomers who will fit right into Maui's exceptional acting pool. Kimberly Akimbo is probably a familiar name because the musical based on the play by David Lindsay Hebert won five Tonys for Best Musical, Book, Score, Female Actor, and Female Supporting Actor. The play was premiered at the South Coast Repertory in Costa Mesa, California in 2001. The storied Manhattan Theater Club did a production in 2003 that was nominated as Best Play Off-Broadway by the Outer Critics Circle in 2003. As the lights come up, Kimberly Lavaco, the ever-astonishing Ally Shore, sits in a hooded polar parka, ice skates over her shoulder, obviously freezing. It is snowing. Finally, Buddy, J. Scott McClellan, shows up. She is upset because she has been waiting for him for two and a half hours. Since the relationships are not defined in the program, the exchange is like that of a girlfriend chewing out her boyfriend for standing her up. But no. Buddy is her father, not her boyfriend, and Kimberly suffers from a fictional illness like progeria that causes her to age four and a half times as fast. So although she is 16, she has the body and stamina of a 72-year-old. They pull into a drive through Zippy's, and the clerk, a fellow student, Jeff, Micah Oberg, recognizes Kimberly and wants to interview her about her illness for his upcoming school project. This causes Buddy to become most paternally protective. However, Kimberly is intrigued. We meet Patty, Karen Romero, in an auspicious Maui debut as Kimberly's mom, wearing wrist splints and ace bandages on her hands that render them useless. She is very pregnant, and she is trying to push the buttons of a portable cassette recorder to tell stories to her new baby to listen to in the future. At school, Jeff, who does anagrams, comes up with Coverly Akimbo for Kimberly. To her delight, the final character is Aunt Debbie, Angelique Scarpelli, another exciting Maui debut. She is Patty's larcenous ex-con sister who doesn't have an honest bone in her body, whom Patty and Buddy left Secaucus secretly to escape from. To say this family is dysfunctional is like suggesting to learn to surf at Jaws in December is a walk on the beach. The only adult in the room is Kimberly, and at 16, she is struggling to navigate the treacherous rapids of first love and trying to figure out her identity while being in the body of a 72-year-old. Ms. Shore consistently distinguishes herself in everything she does, from acting to designing to building and creating. She does it all with the highest quality of excellence. But this role is one of the most difficult female acting roles ever written. It calls for a female adult actor to be a 16-year-old again while inhabiting a senior citizen's body and dealing with a hypochondriac mother, alcoholic amateur father, criminal aunt, a rare fictional illness, so there are no models to imitate and first puppy love. The playwright piles it on, and one or two of these tasks would be like trying to spacewalk without oxygen, but to have all of them taxes a reviewer's vocabulary to find an appropriate analogy. Ms. Shore gives us a Kimberly who is maternal. Her scenes feeding her mother are priceless, confrontational. She doesn't put up with any of her father's BS and regularly reads him the riot act. Naive, she is easily deceived by her aunt and adventurously innocent, as her puppy love with Jeff demonstrates. It is a beautiful, truthfully nuanced performance by an actor who consistently gives her all in everything she does, and she can be assured her hope, expressed in the thankfully printed program, of doing justice to the role was beyond a Supreme Court decision. Bravissima! I learned that due to an occupational obligation on the part of the actor originally cast as Jeff, Micah Oberg stepped into the role a week before opening. The director, Kerrigan O'Brien, gave him permission to be on book. It would certainly be understandable. But on opening night, not only was he off book, but his Jeff was charming, vulnerable, and devoted to Kimberly. 
When Mr. Oberg burst on the professional acting scene in Pro Art's great production of A Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime in 2021, I said his performance was better than the one I saw on Broadway, and I wish I had seen John Gallagher Jr. do Jeff at the Manhattan Theater Club. I know I would be saying the same thing about Mr. Oberg's performance as Jeff. This character was written for Mr. Oberg. He is offbeat, brilliant without being narcissistic, fun, lovable, and truthful, and this with less than a week of rehearsals. You who will see this show during its regrettable last four performances will be seeing, if that is conceivable, an even better performance. The Dungeons and Dragons scene in the second act was one of my favorites of his, but every moment he is on stage is a delight. Karen Romero as Patty is another exceptionally challenging role. The playwright asks the actor to be pregnant, dexterously incapacitated, and later in the show she has to use crutches. Patty is singularly selfish, which, when we meet her sister, causes one to suspect is a genetic trait of her family. Also, she has to go into labor. Ms. Romero's Patty is the most comic character in the show. Her Jersey dialect was spot on. Between her obsession with her new daughter-to-be and her self-possession, Patty is a delectable character, which Ms. Romero plums all the depths of and is clearly having much fun with. This is yet another promising debut. I hope Maui Theater will have other roles worthy of her obvious talents. Ironically, J. Scott McClellan, Buddy, also debuted on Maui in that same production of Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime as Ed Boone, the father of Christopher, Mr. Oberg's character. Since that time, he has distinguished himself in many productions, most notably as Mitch in the recent tragic star-crossed production of A Streetcar Named Desire. His buddy is an alcoholic man-child playing the part of a father and husband while supporting his family as a gas station operator who is running fruitlessly away from a pursuing past which he cannot face. Mr. McClellan's buddy is frantic, responsibly irresponsible, vulnerable, and trapped. It is another outstanding notch on this man's championship acting belt. Aunt Debbie is the match on the wick of the explosives in this play. She is conniving, cunning, calculating, and determined to survive. She plays on her familial ties to achieve her nefarious purposes, and she is merciless in their pursuit. Angelique Scarpelli, who bears a striking resemblance to Ms. Romero, is entirely believable as the sister you love to hate. She also has mastered a credible Jersey speak, and her physical presence adds to the menace this character presents. This is another new Maui actor whose future will be anxiously awaited. When we discuss the plethora of debuts, we must recognize this is Kerrigan O'Brien's Maui directorial debut. And wow, just wow. This is such a difficult play with complex characters doing impossible things, and the director has to have a clear vision so the audience gets it. Miss Kerrigan's was 25, beyond perfect. Every choice she made contributed to the enhancement of this most challenging script. Outstanding work. As if directing the show weren't enough, she and Maui's answer to Ziegfeld, Pro Art's Lynn McCune, designed the set, which uses projections by Doug DeBoer to perfection. There are marvelous scenes of driving when the audience feels like a passenger in the car. The way the doors line up with the projection are a triumph in technology. A word has to be said about Angelica Juarez's sound design and operation. The car door closing and horn? Really? Another wow, and thanks for that. Marcy Smith and Cat Gregory combined on the costumes. I love the Southside Johnny t-shirt. Where did they dig that up? The Chevron coveralls, Kimberly's parka, and shoes. Good work. Kimberly Akimbo runs for only four more performances. That means only 424 people will get to see this great show that will leave you thinking and talking about it for quite some time. It's on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Go to ProArtsMaui.org for tickets. Do it now. This is one you do not want to miss. But that's Curtain Call for this week. Next week, I'll be reviewing MAPA's birthday candles. Mahalo for joining me. I'm Paul James Brown. Maui Strong. Ahui ho.